Hello and welcome to another Storyline Tips and Tricks video. And in this short video series, I take you through some handy tips, tricks, ideas um, that you can implement into your Storyline e-learnings to enhance them and to speed up any processes that you may have. So today we're going to have a look at the Storyline player. Now I'm not going to do this as a walkthrough and go through every feature um, because there's already quite a few of these videos out there. And I think you can find one of those on the Articulate website or from other creators on here. Instead, I'm going to have a look and take you through kind of a couple of features that I always kind of change or edit and discuss why I do this, how it helps me make my e-learnings more personalised and um, how I create certain effects by editing or changing or turning on and off some features of the player. So before we get into that, my name is Emma Berry. I'm an e-learning developer and instructional designer and all round creative person with around eight years experience in learning and development across a variety of sectors. So let's jump into Storyline and have a look at the player. OK, so the first function that I like to edit is the text labels. So you can find text labels in the top toolbar of your player properties window. So you can see there is a lot of them. Um, I think something like 250 altogether. And essentially what these are, are showing you what appears on screen versus what the learner does. Now this is inbuilt functions within Storyline. So an example is the next button here. Now, obviously the function of this is you select next and it goes to the next slide what we see on screen is the word next. So this is essentially just a big table of what the thing does, what the function is versus how it appears on screen to the learner or through a screen reader or however the person is engaging with the e-learning. So obviously when setting up an e-learning, I wouldn't go through this whole list because a lot of it doesn't need to be changed. Um, you've got things like keyboard functions in here, which I don't really want to play with. Um, but there is a few things that I do like to amend. So the first one is our notes tab. Now, usually you find the notes tab either in your menu or at the top bar. I don't have it switched on at the moment, which is why it's not appearing. Um, so if I scroll up and find it, uh, and thankfully this is alphabetical order, so it does make it that little bit easier to be able to find what you need. Okay, so we've got notes tab here. So if I click on where it says notes, I can just type in what I would prefer this to be. So I often go for transcript. And this is because I um, often when working with narrated slides will provide a written transcript in the notes function or in the notes section. So um, this bit here. And obviously with the notes tab that then appears whenever there's a voiceover slide. So now I've typed in transcript. If I update preview, let's just jump back to features and turn on our notes function so we can see. Um, there we go. So you can see on the sidebar now it's appearing as transcript. Let's just put that down to the top bar. There we go. So that's the first thing that I like to amend. And what I do with this function is I don't actually have it switched on all the time. Um, I'll have it switched off as a default. And then depending on if a slide has voiceover, um, I'll use the little cog that you find on each slide to uh, turn it back on if there is a slide with voiceover. So that's the first thing that I like to, to change on these uh, text labels. The second one is based on um, when the learner tries to jump ahead without having done an activity. So this is under invalid answer. So we've got invalid answer and invalid answer text. And this is essentially the little window that appears that says to the learner, you need to complete the activity before moving on. So you might get this on things like the inbuilt multiple choice questions. Now, the reason I changed this is mainly so that it kind of aligns to my tone of voice or the tone of voice of the company or brand that I'm working with. Because to me, in, sort of invalid answer and you must complete the question just sounds a little bit harsh, and a little bit abrupt. So I often change this to say something like, um, hold on. And please have a go at the activity. Now, if the learner does click the submit button or the next button without having completed the activity, that will appear on screen instead. So the functionality is still the same, just the words are different. I would say if you are replacing these, try and get it 
close or less than the number of words that Storyline provides. If you go any longer, it will get cut off. The box is as big as it is. Um, it doesn't stretch or grow if you add more words. So um, just be careful of that and just trial it out and see if your amended text fits. So that's another one that I like to do. You can also edit pretty much anything um, that appears around this player and within your e-learnings. So you can change um, the next buttons, for example, um, if you really wanted it to say something that wasn't next, you could put this as um, move on, for example. Uh, so if I just type that in and update the preview, you can see this next now changes to move on. So if you are working with a brand that has very specific terminology, for example, you can change uh, your next and previous buttons. You can change the name of your menu if you wanted that to be slides, um, the resources, and any of the inbuilt tabs as well. Uh, you can do the same with where you've got um, text entry boxes. You can have it default to something other than type your text here, which I think is the default. Um, and that one I do like to change as well because I often go for type your answer here or type your thoughts here. So sometimes I'll change that one as well. So the main aim with this is just being able to add that extra level of personalization, be able to um, make it your e-learning really sort of customized to whoever you're working for. Um, and often if you're working with a brand, they'll have a tone of voice um, guidelines. And it's nice to be able to make those small changes and also to make your life easier with functionality. And this leads me on to the next feature that I like to change, which we will cover now. So this next feature that I like to amend may seem really obvious, um, and it's the player tabs on the left-hand side. Now, I like to, when I'm setting up an e-learning, just think about the features that I always want the learner to have access to. Um, so I've kind of already gone into detail about the transcript. Um, and our default ones are menu, glossary, trans uh, notes and resources. So you can actually move these around as well. So if you decided or you had a client that didn't want the menu visible, you can turn it off. Um, you can also move it so it's on the top bar um, and appears at the top instead. So if you didn't want any kind of sidebar, you can do that. But you can also add in your own version of um, these tabs as well. So if you click on the add button, you can pretty much link to anything. So you can jump to a certain slide or scene in your e-learning. You can um, open a URL, send an email, print slides. So there's quite a lot you can do with this. I like to use this function for things like linking back to section navigation slides. So, or things like navigation help. So if you've got a video that's walking the learner through how to use your e-learning and you want them to be able to always have access to it, you could create a navigation help slide and you could even have this just light box. So when the learner clicks the tab, so you can see it's appeared now at the top of my top bar, that could then jump to uh, light box, sorry, your navigation help. And the learner, as long as this is switched on, the learner will always have access to this navigation help button. Another thing that I use it for is if there is um, an e-learning with a certificate at the end, I might create a certificate button. Obviously I cannot spell today, there we go. Um, that jumps them to the certificate slide and you can add a condition as well. So I would add a variable that allows them only to do this if the um, course is complete. So there's so much possibility for this. And again, like with your other player tabs, you can turn things on and off dependent on individual slides. Um, but it's good practice at the beginning of your e-learning to just think about what it is you want the learner to always have access to um, and kind of set this up for them so that they can you know, jump to navigation help or they can get the transcript for the slide or see all of the slides in the e-learning. Now you'll notice with the inbuilt ones, uh, like menu or glossary, for example, you get grayed out boxes uh, where it says delete and edit. So you can't actually delete them. You can just turn them off. And obviously, as we've been through with edit, to change the name of these, you have to go via the text labels function. But with the ones that you put in yourself, like navigation help, 
Um, all you do is double click on it or click the edit button and then you can change um, any of the features of it or delete it or move it around. So there is the second feature that I like to change. Now let's have a look at how I change some of the um, colors and effects and menu controls to create a specific effect. So the third way that I amend and edit the player settings is when I want to create a certain effect with my slides. So you can see here, I have created a kind of light blue rectangle in the middle of a dark teal background. Now I'm a really big fan of creating kind of interfaces within interfaces. So what I want is for this rectangle to look like it is the slide space and for this dark blue space to look separate and almost like a sort of larger background. Now, if I preview this slide as is with the current player settings we've been working with um, throughout this video, you will see that we get kind of a blocky, obvious player um, once storyline plays catch up. Here we go. So you can see we've got this black box, um, which is obviously not part of our slide. And what I want is for this all to feel really seamless and like one big window. First thing we need to do is go up to colors and effects. Now you'll notice that it gives you three options when choosing the color scheme for your player. So you can have dark, light or custom. Now in this instance we want to go for custom and we want the background color to be the same color as our slide background which I believe is this dark teal here. So if I select that and click OK, let's re-preview our slide now. And there we go. So you see we've got this really nice effect now where you can't really see the player. You don't have this boxy outline around your slide. But we do still have all the buttons. Um, so we've still got our next and previous buttons, our accessibility settings and um, our menu and everything. So quite often I will strip everything back if I'm going to be working with custom UI, custom buttons and not using the player features. And here we are back in the player window. So there's two things you can do here. Where you've got menus and controls, if you want completely stripped back UI and you're going to put all of it in yourself with custom buttons and custom functions, you can just literally go off and it will just turn everything off. Now, the only problem with this is that then you don't get any access to any of these custom things you've put in the player tabs, any of the player controls, which again, if you're going to do custom UI, then that's not necessarily a problem. What I prefer to do is keep the menus and controls on, but turn off everything on the side. So just uncheck literally everything because that means that I can still make use of these functions, um, like my accessibility controls or the full screen function or my transcript button here, but I can just turn them off when, the, turn them on, sorry, when they're needed. So if I know I'm gonna have custom next and previous buttons, I can just turn them off for all the slides. But like I said before, if I've got a narrated slide and I really want that transcript function, but I don't wanna go through the complex process of adding in a separate button up, you know, in the screen that's going to fill my slide space, what I could just do is just turn the transcript button on and the accessibility controls for that one slide. Um, so if I just go into my little cog here and select that, you get your slide properties pop up and I would turn off the next and previous buttons. I'm going on the basis here that I would be creating custom next and previous buttons. But if this was a slide with voiceover, I could click player default, custom for the selected slides, and then click notes to have my transcript back. So that is a benefit of going, keeping the menu controls on, but turning everything off, uh, which sounds a little bit contradictory. So now if I preview my slide, seeing as I've turned everything off, 
here we go you can see we've got a really nice clear base to work from and i'll insert a little screenshot here of when i've used this in a real kind of live client project and the effects you can kind of create with it um because you can create really nice layered effects by putting things behind this box and making this look like it's your slide space or a kind of floating interface almost so there are my three things that i like to amend edit and amend when doing and setting up my digital learning courses. And if you have any others that you'd like me to walk through, any specific features that you'd like to know more about, then do just let me know and I can cover those in another video. But I really hope this has been helpful. Um, and yeah, if you have any further questions, just get in touch. <laughs>